Welcome back. So I finally got the garage cleaned up, got rid of all the trash, organized things into bins that were kind of loose and laying about, got myself a, a little workspace set up here so I can open up the boxes and put them out on tables a bit easier. We still have about five, maybe six bins of the original collection that I need to get through. We also have a bin down below of World War II items, like a jerry can, ammo can, and a couple of other really cool pieces. We have a Star Trek Enterprise from Master Replica, and then some miscellaneous uh, vintage posters. Uh, the majority of them, I believe, are the Shogun Warrior. They're huge posters. We tried to get them framed, you know, we tried to get all the posters framed and had a little mishap at one of the local hobby framing stores and they ruined two of our posters. We pulled everything from them and we haven't really decided what we're gonna do with them yet. I'll show you the good posters, I'll show you the two bad posters, and then that should wrap up the collection that's in my garage. And then we can eventually work on the collection that you know, Dan and I both have at the storage units. So let me stop talking and we will open up these bins and show you what we have. So let me stop talking. Got a lot of stuff to go through, probably a little more than I wanted to get through in one shot, I, but I think I can make it work and not, cause I don't want the video, so, you know, some of our videos have been a bit long. I appreciate, you know, the few of you who, who stick it out to the end. Also, big thank you to the people who have, you know, really given our G.I. Joe video some love. Kind of overwhelmed by the number of people that have watched that so far. And if you haven't watched it, please go back and take a look because there's just some exceptional pieces, uh, you know, from, from G vintage G.I. Joe in there. Without dragging on, which I've already drug on too long, let's, let me show you what we have in these bins. I'm just gonna knock this one out of the way real quick. There's nothing in here. Uh, it's the it's the master replica phaser from Star Trek. And unfortunately, there's no phaser in here, but there's all the paperwork, the nameplate. Open this real quick. So there's the acrylic case and stand, and then the original box, but the box is empty. So, would have really liked to have seen that, the, you know, what that phaser looked like. So here, the very first, thing, oh, the package is torn, but it's a Froomey's foam wall decoration of, does, this doesn't look too old. Of Captain America. Now we were told, and I don't have any, I don't have any paperwork to back it up, but these were the actual pieces used on set. I'm not sure exactly which way it goes, but I think it was Star Trek Insurrection, or it was a Star Trek episode or movie, and these were wall decorations. And I, like, I, like I said, I'm not quite sure what the orientation of this is, but they're these vacuum formed pieces. And these were actually on the wall as part of the, I think it was on the bridge of one of the ships. Oh, here's the uh, phaser. So it's a phaser light gun. And this is the target that goes with it. We actually had one in a box. I, I think we, we we either sold it or it's 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 available on our eBay store right now, but you'd put batteries in this and you would shoot that uh, beam of light. It would reflect off that and it would let you know if you hit it or not. Uh, this one looks pretty. You know, somebody had a good time with this. It's in good shape, but not you know excellent shape. Oh, we got a Hawkman with sticky wings. Like I've noticed that this material after time. I, I'm not sure what what leaks out of it or if it's you know it just starts to deteriorate and the plastic becomes very sticky I'm not sure what that deterioration process is we have a doctor who risk game we 
got Sandman from DC Comics. Quite a mix of, of figures from different eras. And this is the original Generic Man 3. Is it a plaster model? Oh, it is none of the above. It's a lot of, this looks like resin Enterprise pieces. Like just different molds. You know, we, we know the collector was a model maker, so I'm not sure what each of these little resin pieces are. I don't know, I don't know if there's a complete ship in here. Just different, pla maybe that's plastic, not resin. There's, we have so many resin pieces that sometimes get confused with what they are. You know, there's a, I'm assuming they go like something like that and you assemble them and there's other pieces that would go on here. Like maybe, you know, something like that. These look a little elongated. I don't know if, I'm not familiar. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to look like, you know, elongated like that. There's all kinds of different various pieces in here. We have the flash. Golden Age, it's a hand-painted statue from DC Direct. I don't think it's ever been opened. I think this plastic wrap is not from the factory. I think it's just something that, that it was put in to help protect it. And we have these moccasins, and I, I don't remember if we've shown you these before, but these are green, the Green Hornet. They're kind of mock faux leather. Uh, moccasins for kids. They're in excellent condition. I'm not sure if they were ever worn. They, they are a little dirty on the bottom, but they're not scratched like you would expect to see from somebody wearing them around. A little scuff on there, but otherwise just amazing, in amazing condition. And then lastly in this bin we have Spectre from DC Direct, unopened. Well, it might have been open, but it's still still in the box. It's limited to 1,200 pieces. Oh, it's 11 and a half inches tall. Two. Oh, this. So I, I pulled this out of a different bin. Um, I, I, it obviously goes in here. I just couldn't remember which bin it belonged into. But I guess we'll start with this. It's the Star Wars West End Games uh, miniature game. And this is the Imperial Forces. These are little 25 millimeter metal figures. And continue on that, we've got, this one's opened, but it's the Bounty Hunter set. Can we just look at that real quick? Those are all the little Bounty Hunters in there. I think there's Bosk and Boba Fett, um, IG-88, and just some other other figures in there. And continuing on that same theme, we've got some Star Trek adventure miniatures. So iconic villains. So it looks like there's Khan, the Borg, General Chang, there's Gorn Captain, 32 millimeter. This looks like Spock and Uhura and Captain Kirk. These are still wrapped in their cellophane. This cellophane's torn, but it's, so I don't know if that was actually, ever, they were ever open, but it's possible. Then we have, continuing, we've got the more miniatures of the Romulans here. It says, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, Collector Series, Reliant and Khan's Crew. So this must be Khan's ship. Still sealed in the uh, original package. Here's another. So looks like we have two of those, both sealed. They're, you can see the dirt on that one or the dust. It's just accumulated over the years. Um, we have a, no, so we, we do have a, oh, there's a few Robotech figures. 
So these are the from Matchbox, and I believe they're 85. Yeah, 1985 Robotech figures. Rook Bartley. And then we have Dana Sterling. We have the Bioroid Terminator. We have Rick Hunter. Show you the back side of that as well. Some more metal miniatures. Um, Star Trek is the Wrath of Khan. This looks like the space laboratory. Contains scientists and the Genesis computer. Still sealed. It's like a Dairy Queen Star Trek. So just a little toy spaceship with a scratch off. Maybe you could scratch off and win something. We have a mystery box. Has, oh, it's just a stand for something. And then we have the Hero Clicks. Oh, this the Hero Clicks game. This is just the Star Trek version of those. It's a bunch of sealed. I don't think any of these packages. Oh, maybe the nope. These are all taped shut. So. If you're familiar with the Hero Clicks game, get to this. So we have a Star Trek phaser pistol and communicator and tricorder set. This is a newer piece. I don't know what the year on this is. Oh, 2012. But it's a replica of the original, original items on the series. Or, I wonder if this is the ship that goes with that stand. It's a Romulan ship. Yeah, I think, so, this stand, because there's no stand in here, so I'm assuming these two go together, but this is, it's like a metal, like, this is heavy. I don't know if this is like a Franklin Mint piece. Some paperwork in here. Oh yeah, Franklin Mint. You can see that. It's the Romulan Bird of Prey. It must have been a series because that says star number three on it. So I wonder what other ships they had in the collection. We have another Franklin Mint piece. I guess they find out. Oh, this is the original transporter. Just open. These are really heavy. I'm going to say that's a few pounds. But it's the Galileo. And it has a stand somewhere. This is from 94. Back in here since we're almost done. And then we have more Star Trek Hero Clicks still in the original box. Oh, I'm excited, really excited when I first saw this bin because I thought it was the original Space 1999 figures, but these are all the repops from 2005. Professor Bergman, David Hand, and a female alien. We have Alan Carter and Paul Morrow, Bill Frazier and Dan Mateo, Sandra Benz and Tony. I don't remember the, their names. Like I, I remember watching the show, but I just I couldn't tell you who was who. Ooh, a mysterious alien. And Maya. Companion from the Infernal Machine and Ron. We have Captain Xantor and Professor Bergman again. Another mentor. Now remember Baylor. So here's Baylor. These are, I think, all of these are unpunched. And then number eight. 
have some trading cards in here from Mobius. From 1993. And then some Frazetta artwork cards. These are from 93 as well. We have a Rocketeer Bendem figure. And then lastly, we have two battle, the repops of the Battlestar Galactica from Joyride. We have that Apollo, that Starbuck, and then the Cylon Warrior. And as you can see, they're, they're really dirty. Oh, it's a PC game, Star Trek Captain's Chair. Or maybe it's not a game, maybe it's screensavers. Or you can just, maybe it's just a tour of each of the ships. So you can see in virtual reality as, as VR was back in 1997, you can tour the Bridges of each of the ships. Lieutenant Yar figure from Star Trek The Next Generation. And they started coming out, you know, for like, seemed like every couple years they'd come out with new replicas of the phasers and things like that. This is a really nice one. This is what, so that empty box we have, this is what was in there and this is oof, the green hornet oh this must have been one of those radio mail aways i don't know if we've shown this already but it's the green hornet gjm club it's official membership card you got a postcard sign from brit Re I don't think that's an actual signature, but got a nice little message from him. He's just making sure to eat little kernels regularly. They make the program possible. They're grand, delicious, nourishing, and you get lots of builder upper mineral calcium as a plus. Cool. Promo plug there. And then we have these Aurelia Warrior Nun figures. look familiar like I think we've already gone through this so I had to do a little reorganizing it I think some of the bins got mixed up so I ended up you know as I'm going through them they, they all seem they seem very familiar like we'd already gone through them and I don't want to I want to try not to show things twice I'm just going to jump on top we have some other pieces up here that are loose that aren't in bins but we have a Three Musketeers set. This guy doesn't belong in here. From, I believe it's Marks. Oh yeah, oh, no, Aurora. So the Aurora plastic model kits of the Three Musketeers. You have Aramis and Porthos. They're really delicate. And then Athos. And if you can see on the bottom there. And then they have their little swords in a plastic bag. And we have from Hasbro's collector series, the G.I. Joe Corsair, F4U Corsair, Major Pappy Boyington, who is a Marine Corps Flying Ace. I believe he was an ace. I'm not. We learned about him at boot camp, but that was quite some time ago. I just want to. This is. I think this is die cast. Oh, it's. I, I'd, I'd undo it, but it's. It's still taped together, so it's. Really nicely detailed. 
And then here is a G.I. Joe Sherman tank. I don't know, this, I don't know if this is Franklin Mint or what collection this comes from, but this is, this is all die cast. You have a little tank capped in there. And I think these are, this is a limited series as well. There's no box, it's just the styrofoam. This I just grabbed, this was in the garage at the house. It was a baking set from Swans Down. Just an old tin set, a thermometer. Can't remember what they call these. Uh, it's a cake pan, but it's the, oh no, it isn't. This is just a regular cake pan. I thought it was one of those ones that you release, like had the latch on the side, but it has these little vents on the side. I'm not sure what those are for, but it's looks like the complete cake set with directions and box. The box has got a little tear in the side on the tape. So this paper was from the California Examiner from 19, April 1st, 1949. I know these are Star Trek figures. Not quite sure what series these are from. We've got a Deep Space Nine O'Brien. This looks, I, I don't know if these are like mail away figures, because I've seen Deep Space Nine figures loose, but just wondering why this one is especially in its own box. And then we have another set of figures here. Maybe they were just, you bought them from somewhere and just mailed away for them. We have some Wrath of Khan figures. We've got Savick or Spock. Savick and Kirk. And from my understanding, they did not make a lot, if any, Wrath of Khan figures when the movie was released. From, from my limited understanding is I, I don't think the original movie figures did very well so they didn't make any new figures for Wrath of Khan but then Wrath of Khan was a huge hit and they had no figures to share yeah I think this is the last bin of really dirty so this is an old Captain America pinball game this isn't I'm gonna go out on a limb yeah this is not the original pack this is just a big Ziploc bag that this was put in to help protect it so if that's the case I want to crack this open yeah, the, so the the card is a bit yellowed this card back here and the, the plastic is a little yellowed as well, but it looks to be from the 1976, but everything still seems to work. And we have a Messerschmitt model. It's not a model, it's just a uh, little toy dis uh, display toy from Ultimate Soldier, 132nd scale. That's what I was, I was looking for the scale. We have a Green Lantern Golden Age figure. We have some Star Trek pins. A little, they look like little enameled collector pins. There's a, Oh, I was wondering why it was so heavy. It's because this is glass. And we have the Three Stooges plush. With the, they have plastic heads. And so these are little Star Trek pins, but they're they're rubber. Or not pin. Oh, those are are they rings? Little, 
little Velcro strap there. Maybe it's just to put on a, you know, you hang it on your strap of a, a bag or something like that. We have your Roquero Taco Bell, Taco Bell Chihuahua. Yeah. Captain Kirk's bobblehead. Oh, sorry, Admiral Kirk bobblehead. And this says Kellogg. So these are, these must have been mail away Kellogg Star Trek uniforms. You can see it says Kellogg on there. Got the Star Trek emblem there. You have the maroon, the blue, and the kind of mustard color. We couldn't figure out what th this looks like an armored personnel carrier of some kind. It's resin, but it's a model for something that he was building. We just don't know what, like what it was for, or if it was just him, you know, making it just to, to have something, you know, playing, messing around. And then lastly, we have a couple of fantastic plastic models here. This is the Orville. Orville is, that's new. It's like molded plastic pieces. You can see that. SS Botany Bay, the DY-100 Sublight Sleeper Ship. Oh, this, did it attach to the, I wonder if this attached to the Enterprise or, you know, ships like that. So these are the posters we were telling you about. And I, I'm going to do the bad thing, start with the bad news first. We took all, all of the posters in to get framed. We had selected, you know, the, the different color frames we wanted and everything. And these two, these, they were posters that had been rolled up and had been not creased flat, but the way they'd been stored, they were kind of squished a little bit so that when you unrolled it, it was just had these waves in it. So the person that we were talking with said, hey, maybe you should dry mount these to foam board and we'll, you know, we can put a frame around them. And, you know, originally we were just gonna not dry mount them. And the reason he suggested dry mounting was to get rid of the rolls so it'd be nice and flat. So, you know, we thought, hey, that's great. And then this happened. So, this is a gorgeous poster from Gotcha Man. And if you can see that little spot right there where it looks like as it was feeding through, can you see that? Where when this was feeding through, something got caught and just rippled the edge right there. But I was so bummed out about this because it's such a, it's a beautiful poster. Nice graphic print, you know, all in Japanese. And I'm guessing this is, you know, late seventies, maybe into the eighties. This one is much worse. So this is an Ultraman poster. And I, I'm sure you can already see just the damage that was done. So this one, we were, I was, both of these posters, these were two of my favorite posters besides the, uh, the Shogun posters. So we were really bummed that these got destroyed. We're, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna keep them, but these aren't gonna go on display. I mean, there's really nothing we can do at this point because it, they're, they're stuck to the foam board. In fairness, they did compensate us, but not 
I mean, how do you compensate? They can only compensate what the perceived value is, or the, or the sorry, the actual value. There's a perceived value there, you know, of rarity. I don't, I don't even know if those are particularly rare posters, but they're just very cool. And from the person that they came with, that just added to the, the coolness of the poster. So it was, it was really a bummer to, 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 to lose those. But these are huge. Here, let's save those to last. We'll get to a couple of these other ones down here. So this looks like a recruiting poster from the U.S. government. I don't see a date. I mean, it might be 43, but I, I, I don't see a, a specific date on here of when when this might have been uh, on display. But I thought, you know, you have the Revolutionary War and then, you know, World War II, which I thought was a really cool, and this, again, we were going to have this one print uh, framed. And then once that happened with those two posters, we pulled everything back and it's like, I just, I, we'll just have to find a different means of framing these out. So let's, Take a look at the gloriousness of these posters. I mean, they have got to be, I don't know, is that two feet, three feet, something like that? Hopefully that's coming through. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous posters. Oh yeah, the other posters are in here too, so we'll, I'll show you those. You know, and they're, they're not in the greatest condition, but because of just how they were stored, they weren't stored in any particular protective case or, you know, roll. They were just rolled up and thrown in a box when we found them. I just love the graphics. Like Dan and I spent, I don't know, probably an hour at the store trying to pick out the perfect color frame, you know, and then trying to match like what would look, what color frames would look good together if these were all displayed, you know, right next to each other. If you're a framer out there, you own a frame shop, you know, get in touch with us and let us know. We'd love to, we, we definitely want to get these framed out. Or, I mean, the problem with framing them is they'll be hard to ship, but I, I I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do if we're going to frame them or not. So here's a couple other items that were in here. I don't remember what these were. So they, these got, oh yeah. So this is a Bugs Bunny superheroes poster. Now these aren't obviously real signatures of Bugs Bunny. I think it was a stage show. Had Wonder Woman, Batman, and Robin, plus many of your favorite cartoon characters from 1977. And then we have a Doc Savage signed limited edition print. You can see the signature and number. And then you have the certificate of authenticity on the back. And then here's just, like, this was for the envelope. I think they were going to, they were gonna put this on the back of the frame just as a kind of, not provenance, but just, it was part of it. So there's another Doc Savage. This is a numbered print, but not signed. But that's a, that's pencil. The, the numbers were written in pencil. So these are obviously sold together. And then this Japanese movie, poster. And I looked up the movie, I just can't remember what the, the name of it was. So these are something we're definitely looking at. I shouldn't say definitely, because it, you know, they're easier to ship if we can just roll them up in, in a tube and mail them. But, you know, Dan and I have actually even thought about just framing them and keeping them for ourselves and putting up in a like a man cave or something like that. Now if I remember correctly this is not complete and I believe it was it was on display so it's 
relatively dirty or has dusty I should say but it's a master replica USS Enterprise Let's see by that insert base that it sits on you can see the master replica and it's it's electronic so it lights up you just have a you know it's a, it's a kind of plug there and an on off switch Yeah, so there's the power adapter. And they have little, there's a little, looks like little light bulbs. And uh, the dish that goes on the bottom part of the hole here. I mean, actually, I, I thought it was dustier, but it, it's just a, a, yeah. Oh no, maybe it isn't dusty. It just, it, it has, I don't know if you can see that. It looks like not damage, but, um, wear, but it, it's replica. It, it's, it's faux finished wear, but there's all these little lights that light up around it. And then your dish goes down here that we saw just a second ago and I like I said I don't I don't think it's complete but again I don't know exactly what goes in here it like this isn't there's no I don't see any broken pieces or anything like that but I don't I'm assuming this area right here was for an envelope like the other master replica stuff and I don't there's no envelope there, so that's what that's what lends me to believe that you know it's it's not a complete. Well, certainly it's not complete without that, but I, I just don't know what else went in there, or maybe that's where the maybe that's where the envelope went for the info because these all came with a an envelope that had all the paperwork and everything in it, but amazing piece for a Star Trek collector. So here we have some crew jet. Oh, darn it. I forgot the, I had to put this in here. I'll get that later. So I don't think this is a crew jacket. I think this is just a flight jacket, just a, a, a real flight jacket, not a, you know, not one of those little knockoff replicas. And it's a, I, there's a company that made these. I don't see a name, but it was Ace or something along those lines. There's got to be a tag in here somewhere. Sometimes it's in the pockets. But really nice and heavy flight jacket. But most of these are crew jackets. I, I don't believe this is a crew jacket. I think this was just a, he just had a flight jacket. Then we have, which this is a very cool t-shirt, Jackie Chan, The Big Brawl. I'm not sure if this was his first film, but it's a, I'm a oh, it's an extra large single stitch t-shirt. And now these, I think we're getting into the crew, a couple of the crew jackets. So this is a Godzilla versus Mothra jacket. get small I mean this is this just looks like a it's the little iron-on velvet type letters from the from the 70s 80s but it just says get small so I'm assuming it's some sort of uh, model company you know food fabrication we have a lost in space t-shirt this is also single stitch 1985 well lost in space so it must have been an anniversary shirt yeah 
that says 19 so this must this is from 1985 and then just a random that showbiz t-shirt also single stitch a west virginia t-shirt well not t-shirt like kind of a t-shirt i love this shirt it's your harry carey shirt cut on the dotted line it's got some gunk down here i don't know if that'll wash out but single stitch as well size large and then a crew jacket and this is from a godzilla film not godzilla 2 maybe breast graphic left breast graphic another windbreaker style and now we're going to get into the world war ii <laughs> Here we have a jerry can which like i don't i don't know if this ever had fuel in it no nope, i don't smell any fuel whatsoever it looks brand new i mean it's got some just scratches from storage but Your typical trench shovel from World War II. That's pretty tight. I have to clean that up. But straighten that out and have your trench tool. It's also used as a weapon. So you could dig trenches and fight off the enemy with it. And that's and these are, here's another one these were used you know not just in world war ii but you know vietnam and, and korea we even had these in the 90s when i went through the, the marine corps but it was a plastic like this they'd replace this canvas case with a plastic case and it was just it was essentially that big and it wasn't a wooden handle anymore it's like everything folded up like you can see how dirty my hands are from this stuff canteen with canteen cup in there and then you start getting into the uncommon item like, this is some sort of fuel tank and i am not sure i haven't done a ton of research on it but it's, i'm not sure what this is for if it's an aircraft fuel tank i mean not a obviously not to fuel or, or aircraft but if anybody knows what this is let me know 30 cal ammo can. These are always great to have. Now this is something I had never seen before, but it just, it's one of those things you, you've never seen it, but when you see it, it's like, oh yeah, it totally makes sense that they have those. But it's a little uh, pickaxe. And you had your handle and then a canvas case that held your pickaxe in there you drop it through there and help you dig your holes break through rock and then again you could probably use this not probably you could use it as a weapon if needed and we have an old signal core radio i don't know if these these headphones were part of it they're they're missing the I don't know if they're missing anything actually. But some old headphones. It's like the connectors are have been cut off. But we have an old signal course signal core US Army phone. And it's in a leather case. field radio phone but the key, what surprises me is the condition of the leather case like usually these are torn and and the leather started to rot away and you know dry out but you have you can see in there where batteries must have gone where you see those 
spring connectors there. But just a super cool piece. And wait till you see the the piece that Dan has. He's got a couple of, of items in his storage unit that are, one of them is just, it'll blow you away. Well, if it'll, it'll help you from getting blown away, I should say. And we have a nice uh, little hand axe with case, which again, that looks brand new. I don't think anybody, the paint is almost perfect on it. So it's a first aid packet, and I'm wondering if it says crystalline sulfanilamide. Does anybody know what that? I don't. I just can't think off the top of my head what that is. But is it sealed container? Another canteen with belt. This is something that's strange. It is a periscope head, and I'm assuming for from. For a tank so this is the the head of the periscope because I, I don't I don't think it was from a submarine but maybe it's just you know as you're in the tank you can use the head of the periscope to help you see what's surrounding you but it's still I mean those are I'm assuming that's lead crimps that are holding that together I've never seen one of these brand new well New old stock, as they say. And this is a little gas mask with a canvas, black canvas case. And you have a little bandolier with some spent cartridges, maybe from an M1, the Garand. Except for, so I'm going to hold off on these. I'll show you these in just a second. Okay. So this case right here is a huge briefcase type wooden case. Handle is still in pretty good condition, starting to crack. But what this is... was an identification training aid. And in this box, these are all glass slides. And I'll show you. So, and they're glass slides of airplanes. And these were used to help train Navy pilots of what enemy planes look like. So the, I, I don't know how many glass slides are here, but is this whole case is full of these slides. I don't know if there's anything in here. No, it's empty. Maybe that's, I wonder if this is where the viewer went, the projector to, so you can project the slides. Wish we had that, but as you can see, it's just more of these Navy recognition. This looks to be, that looks like a ship. HMS Furious, CV-3, April 12th, 1943. US Navy recognition training. So that little, this must, this is airplanes. And I wonder if these are all ships. Oh no, here's, here's airplanes. So this is a combination. This is a HE-111K from Three Dimension Company out of Chicago. But I mean, it's, I, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, more, more plain silhouettes. Oh, that's actually, so some of these are photographs and then some are just silhouettes. So I wonder if the silhouettes are like for bombers and things like that. And this must be, 
This is the projection board. I wonder if you projected them on here. Yeah, so this this must be where the the pro projector went. I'm guessing. But it's on the back side. Oh, it's just the back side of but just a great piece of old military US military history. And there's quite a few items in the collection. So that does it for today. You end up getting cleaned up, get everything kind of repacked and reorganized. And that does it for what I have at the in my garage. The next videos will either be from Dan's garage or from my storage unit and then we'll eventually get through Dan's storage unit. The great thing about this is we don't have a time frame for going through this. I you know typically we like to get in, get things posted and then get, you know, just move on to the next collection, but we're we're really trying to be diligent about this and take our time and we don't need to making the money isn't the important thing for us on this. We just want to try and get everything documented. So, you know, if it takes like we have so much stuff, this could take months to, you know, not film, but we can, you know, film it and then it might take months before we get things posted. Unless, you know, if anybody sees anything, you know, in a video and you're curious about it, just send us a message and, and we can, you know, maybe work something out before it even hits the eBay store. But I, I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. There's many more items to come. Several, I mean, I probably still have... 20, 25 boxes in, and bins in the storage unit. And we'll just keep rolling those out as we, I'm, I'm trying to do a video every week. Dan, I know has, he's trying to get his plane, more plane videos, the ID recognition plane videos done. We'll get those incorporated. We really appreciate, you know, the, the, the views and the likes that we've gotten so far. And especially the comments, I try to respond to all the comments as I can. You know, sometimes I don't get to them right away. We love the support and we appreciate the support and we continue to encourage you to support us, you know, going through this collection. And, you know, as always, if you could give us the video a like, subscribe to our channel and then hit the notification bell to let you guys know when we post new videos and comment. Like, I'd love to read the comments. Share, like, we'd appreciate it if you'd share these videos. If, you know, somebody you may know, you know, especially some of this World War II stuff, there may be something in here that, you know, somebody you know would enjoy seeing, and we'd really appreciate that. Until next time, I'm, I think the next video will be a, a video from Dan, and then, you know, we'll just keep plugging away. So again, we appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time.